Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. I don't know about you boys and girls, but it feels like everything's going at 100 miles an hour since the Fed. Um, very, very busy. Lots going on. How are you coping, Kay? Hey, good morning, Ryan. Good morning, everybody. Can you close the window, please, Ryan? It's a bit windy in here. <laughs> <laughs> or, or is Powell... Oris Powell said uh, a few weeks back, close the fucking door. Yeah, close the fucking door. Yeah, of course. They all, it happens every year. They make us work hard just ahead of the uh, holidays. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And uh, four more banks to go, folks. Four more banks to go. Uh, two today. Three today. Uh, got Is Banksico today? Oh, I've lost track of who's. Yeah, Banksico as well. <laughs> yeah, thanks for going in uh, the Bank of Japan on Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, four more to go, and then we can all put our feet up, hopefully. Anyway, right, lots to get through, obviously, so uh, let's get stuck into things. Uh, we'll kick off with the data, because um, it's not been too good in uh, a couple of places. GDP in uh, New Zealand coming in minus 0.3% on the quarter, minus 0.6%. On the year, big misses there for GDP um, in New Zealand. Um, that's obviously hit the Kiwi this morning. Uh, then we get uh, unemployment uh, from Australia, which uh, was pretty good. Um, the employment change, 61,500 from 11,000 expected. Um, the full-time, uh, part-time switcheroo was pretty good as well. Full-time employment up 57,000. Um, however, the unemployment rate rose, uh, but that was largely in part to the participation rate rising. So although that looks a negative, uh, it's explained away by that participation rate rising, more people coming into the market. Um, so a bit of uh, mixed fortunes there for the Aussie and Kiwi. Um, as I said, no surprise to see uh, Aussie Kiwi uh, pushing up. Uh, oh, look where it is, round about our magic uh, 108 level, the old magnet. Absolute glue, this thing is. Um, let's go into a wider chart just so you can see that. Always coming back to the 108 at some point. Um, doing pretty nicely on the text, though. Um, got, I've got this uh, longer term trend line in, but the sort of secondary shorter term trend line, well, marking this year really, um, playing a little bit better on that front. Um, but yep, yeah, here we are. 108 once again uh, on uh, pretty much on the back of that data. Um, CPI in Sweden coming off a good chunk uh, year on year. 5.8% versus 6.5% prior was expected to drop to 6%. And um, some of the other measures as well falling out of bed. So a lot of countries uh, now seeing accelerating uh, inflation falls there. Uh, PPI Switzerland, that's coming down as well. Um, CPI in Spain coming down a little bit as well, not as fast, still looking a little bit more sticky perhaps, uh, but that's coming down as well. So we're in uh, a market of uh, falling inflation and it's picking up speed, it seems, uh, which is one to keep an eye on. Um, central banks, the SMB kept its rate unchanged, 1.75% as expected. What it did do, though, is it removed the text in the statement on possible future hikes. Um, the SMB said they are no longer focusing on foreign currency sales. Uh, but we need to change policy if the FX rate becomes too tight. Uh, brushing off the cuts, said the rate cut is not for discussion now as the policy stance is adequate. Uh, quick one on the SMB, Kate. Yep, um, hold and um, taking away the references in the press conference, he even said that uh, they were not looking at selling Swiss franc, uh, oh, buying, sorry, Swiss franc right now, selling foreign currency. So I guess we, um, they, they do expect a little blip in the, in the inflation again, but, um, you know, that's uh, perhaps their way of saying they're leaving a door open, but clearly they are done. And uh, a bit in line with what uh, with what Powell was saying yesterday, they, they probably start to look at uh, at the other side now. Um, it is our let's say green light um, to sell Swiss franc. I and and 
it's it's about as good as we can expect from a guy like Jordan, um, who is a let's face it, an, an, an Uber Hawk. If he would be at the ECB, he would um, he would actually uh, uh, be a fierce competition to Holtzman. Um, but uh, yeah, I think they're 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 uh, they're done, and um, it's it's a green light. But you know what it, you know what what there is. It's always Swiss franc is always a bit of this bizarre one. We also have to um, acknowledge and know that Swiss franc is not among the main currencies of asset management in asset management books. There's a lot of currencies ahead, like um, of course the dollar, the euro, sterling, yen. Uh, and perhaps Aussie and Kiwi are even bigger than, than the Swiss franc in, in asset managers' book. So we got, we are going to need flows. Um, but this is um, this is the, the as, as good as a people as we as we can get from uh, from the S and B. I reckon. Um, now they're not, uh, not going to in, intervene in their currency until they decide to intervene in their currency. <laughs> yeah, and and um, you know we've been looking so often at those uh, FX reserves um, coming down to those levels. I think that's a signal, clear signal from Jordan that uh, that this is enough. Um, yeah. Even is he even said something which is a bit of a of a line going um, in the other way. He said. Uh, we need to change policy if FX rates becomes too tight. So that's even if the Swiss franc becomes uh, becomes too strong, they will they will have to go the other side. That's how I read it anyway. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a sorry. I was going to say yeah, they, they they play both sides of it all the all the time. So yeah, <laughs> it's the, not really that is, much of a surprise, is it? <laughs> the thing now is um, the. Um, it, if you want to be short Swiss franc, you need to choose your currency wisely. I'd say, um, okay, if if ECB um, remains neutral to to mildly hawkish, then then you're probably going to see an explosion in all euro <clears throat> or in some of the euro pairs at least. Um, I expect them to be very very neutral, but um, the ECB could also come out come over a little bit more dovish, especially like Garda during the presser. I would say. Uh, because we have to to we will have to make the distinction between the press conference and uh, and and uh, and statement. <clears throat> but if they give the green light, Euro Swiss may be a candidate. I'm I'm rather looking at other currencies to to be um, uh, short Swiss against right now because I'm I'm feeling that the ECB may be a little bit of a risk. So that for the SMB part. Yeah, uh, James has just said uh, Jordan just spoke on Bloomberg saying that Swiss franc appreciation is not so large in real terms. So uh, I guess we'll have to draw up another uh, trade-weighted index for the Swissy now to watch. Yeah, but he's, he's watching his own trade-weighted index then because if you look at the Swiss... <laughs> his own trading trade index, it is a lot. Yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, let's uh, leave that one for the uh, Jordan, the old basketball player. Um, Norgies, they hiked to 4.5% and said the rate to stay at 45 until autumn 2024 before moving down. A uh, bit of a missed uh, opportunity, this one, because I didn't realise uh, that market expectations had them um, keeping rates on, unchanged. And at the October meeting, they said rates would likely go up in December. Um, so that one caught uh, the market on the hopper bit, Kay. Well, the, the thing is... <clears throat> They left the door open for December, but they also said there is a lot of incoming data between now and December, and the inflation came off, oh, yeah. and so that's where the market went. Like, okay, they they probably done, and 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 perhaps we we are moving over into 2024. So, a missed opportunity, yes and no. It's um, if you look at the price action from where it comes, it is a missed opportunity, of course. Yeah. And actually, I was updating it in, in our room when we were trading at 11 and I was saying, like, well, all right, do I really, ah, come on, because it sets, it's, it, it's a level. And um, but I was still a bit uh, positive dollars at the, at the time, and um, which was about uh, 12 hours ago. And um, yeah, so I didn't, uh, I decided not to go into it because I agreed upon the fact as well um, that with the numbers coming out of Norway and with the, and with ours um, dumping, that that perhaps they're 
shouldn't be anything uh, to be done. But uh, then, you know, well, they, they took it as, a, as an advantage. And perhaps also because they see the, the, the level of the Norwegian kroner and they say like, okay, Norwegian kroner can absorb the, 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 the hike shock um, and the rest will be okay. So, yeah, I don't know about the missed opportunity. It's, it's a bit of a highway hindsight missed opportunity, I would say. Yeah, well, we've had a bit of highway hindsight given everything that's going on there today. Um, yeah, Paul's asking why did uh, Kiwi Dollar appreciate uh, last night? Um, on the back of that poor data, uh, well, purely the Fed, purely the dollar side of the, yeah. the, the US dollar side of things. Um, as I said, it's it's more you can see the effect more reflected in uh, Aussie Kiwi. Um, you know, when you take uh, the US dollar out of the equation, um, that's what uh, you want to tend to look at. But uh, yeah, purely the Fed uh, by the looks of things on that move, Paul. Um, right. So on to the US um, and. We got some uh, PPI data out yesterday, um, which uh, by and large I didn't think was going to be overly important um, for the Fed, but apparently it was. Powell mentioned uh, one of the comments that um, officials changed their forecasts after the PPI numbers came out on Wednesday. So it's very, very late that they left their deliberations um, and they, you know, some of them changed their forecasts. So they are pretty much trading data dependency as, as much as we are. Um, the PPI, you know, came down core PPI at 2% from 2.3% uh, more than expected. Um, all the other measures as well coming in softer. So, you know, it keeps that uh, disinflationary pressure in the pipe there. Um, before we get right into the Fed, um, there was a couple of uh, comments from OPEC and their, uh, their monthly uh, bulletin um, just for you oilers. Um, the, the, the funny line that uh, one of the guys picked up, uh, Mark, said uh, in their notes that they said that speculators have played a major role in the significant downturn in crude futures prices. Um, so apparently speculators are now bigger than OPEC in determining which way price moves go. Um, they said this dynamic was fueled by exaggerated concerns about oil demand growth. Well, so bullish they are about uh, oil demand growth. They say they remain cautiously optimistic about the fundamental factors affecting the oil market dynamics in 2024. Um, so you're all bad speculators, you lot. You shouldn't be speculating against oil. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Um, anyway, oil still uh, mooching around at pretty low levels. Um, after nicking new lows, we had a bit of a bounce, as you can see there. But... Uh, Still got a long way to go before turning around uh, what's happened over the last uh, couple of weeks. Anyway, right, let's get into it. His nibs over at the FOMC. Right, the kept rates unchanged. Uh, then the median dots showed 75 pips of rate cuts in 2024. Powell said inflation is still too high. Now, he, let's be in... Uh, in no uncertain terms, the Fed have pivoted, okay? But Powell started off, he, he went through phases. He started off uh, with his sort of same old line saying inflation was still too high. Um, that lower inflation readings over the last few months are welcome, but we will need further evidence. Said we anticipate getting to 2% inflation will take some time and they're prepared to tie and policy further if appropriate. Also saying that policymakers don't want to take the possibility of further hikes off the table. So pretty much the same as what uh, we heard at that uh, Spielman College thing a week or so ago and prior FOMC. So st sticking to that script, which, again, the market stuck up two fingers to. Um, then he had the turn saying we believe our policy rate is at or near its peak and it's not likely we will hike further. And uh, then on rate cuts, said uh, that uh, the topic of rate cuts begins to come into view and will be discussed or and be discussed. So there we're getting all the uh, dovish lines coming out now. Then he went uh, a bit on the other side of the fence saying, we think we have done enough on rates, but we are not fully confident in that view. And that uh, above trend growth could mean ultimately that we need to hike again. So... 
as I say, onto the other side of the fence. Then he hopped back to the Dovey side and said, we are aware of the risk that we could hang on too long with higher rates. And then he said, you need to reduce restriction on the economy well before inflation gets to 2%. So hinting that rate cuts could come even if they don't haven't yet hit their inflation target. And uh, finally, he said, uh, we are not talking about altering the pace of uh, QT, which I know uh, Kay's got a comment on because he sort of bumbled that one. So overall, we have a Fed who has finished hiking uh, in all but name uh, and the cut conversation has started. So what's happened? Well, as usual, the market uh, has gotten all uh, thrown its toys out the pram. The Fed uh, median says 75 basis points of cuts. The market is pricing over 150 basis points of cuts next year. So make of that what you will. Um, carnage ensued. US 10-year yield down through 4%. Dollar yen down through everything. And uh, the dollar taking it on the chin pretty hard. Um, go on, Kate. What are your thoughts, mate? Yeah, that's... Um... That's an earlier pivot than uh, than I was expecting, um, and it is a and it is a clear one. Um, this this has, um, I think, scared the 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 dollar pools and and those who were um, expecting that he would uh, fight back a little bit. This is uh, really a, a victory for the for the doves. Um, because we were talking about, uh, we had a whole discussion about that um, prior to the meeting in our um, chat room, in our Flowonomics room, <laughs> where people can, uh, you know, who are with us can can come and have a look at that. And um, those who are not with us should uh, to come and have a look at it. And um, so we were quite coming to a consensus that the bar between Dovish and, and, and Hawkish would be somewhere around 4.875. Um, James uh, uh, came up with that number and, and, and really after um, looking at the, the, the pros and contrasts of, of, of such a number, the, the consensus was relatively around there in our in our chat room. And this, the 460, and we were saying like as, as the closer it gets to 4.5%, the, the, the more Dovish it will seem. And the 460 is, uh, is a Dovish one. Now, um, the QT thing, and that always comes at the end of the press conference, and, and uh, until now he's been really saying like, no, we didn't even discuss it. But yesterday he felt quite uncomfortable actually around uh, uh, when, when the question came up in, in kind of double layer question there, and he felt a bit uncomfortable about the timing um, uh, compared to the prior meetings as well. So if you take if you take the overall meeting, it's clearly a, 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 dov, a dovish pivot. Um, they are done, and um, I don't know where he personally is. He won't he won't tell us. Um, but he sounded like he might have been um, closer to the ones who were at the 460, where before he was clearly without saying it in in the more hawkish uh, in the more hawkish camp. Um, so yeah, um, and and that of course is food for uh, bond um, bond bulls, uh, the Bilakmans and Gunlags of uh, of of this world as well. Um, the uh, the equity markets uh, are just liking it and looking at the timing on the calendar where it came up uh, with that is that now for the end of the year um, there's going to be zero. Um, um, stress over liquidity probably because the main liquidity conditions are are just loosening by by the hour um and um likely we are going to see with uh with with a bit of a cave at or caution for tomorrow because we have quadruple witching um but we are likely going to see a, a pretty positive close of this uh of this year right um on uh on most of the asset markets so um I guess the dollar remains under pressure. Again, look, watch out for tomorrow. Watch out for those two, three central banks <laughs> that we still need to have as well. Because yeah. if we get uh, an equal pivot on uh, on from from the ECB, uh, Bank of England, or, or or and or Japan, um, we'll come to that. Um, it, it it could be a real, real big mess for the for the rest of to, uh, of today and tomorrow. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, this is all playing in favor of uh, of very, very positive markets. Yeah. Well, I've got a question for you because, you, know, yeah. uh, you know, my mind likes to go off piece to these things and uh, start thinking about the why of what happened. Um, I'm thinking perhaps that obviously this is this is orchestrated for maybe a particular reason, and that's to suck out the volatility from everything. We know central banks don't like volatility. So this is a this is obviously a bit of a volatile time of year anyway, end of year, so on and so forth. So, you know, have have they done this turn, this pivot now, let all the volatility get mixed up in the year end stuff. And then when we come into the new year, the market's already set, ready to go, it's done its pricing, and then we we see volatility coming down rather mm. than, you know, get into the new year, then announce this and they have a whole volatility blow up uh, then. Oh, that's um, that's some question, and and you know it, it it really reminded reminded me yesterday of the of the inverse uh, the inverse uh, which Corona did last year, right? Also in December, um, it doesn't take away volatility, and you know people need to close their books uh, for for the year. I'm I'm not sure that this is get the volatility out. For the rest of this year, and then uh, we we start the 2024 on a clean sheet. If that were to be the case, then I think it's a wrong, wrongly orchestrated move. Um, I uh, wow, that's a that's a question. It's, you know, it's, as I say, it's, it's a off the cuff thought because yeah, you know, but uh, I I'm not going to say that this will. Uh, fit the bill for that? Um, no, I, I wouldn't think so. Unless um, they get another couple of data out which are better, and then they pivot again the start of next year. But that would be even increasing the the, the volatility again. Um, that would not be. Or I mean, in in a way, it could um, calm down some some possible nerves that that would have been for liquidity issue over over the turn, but. The, the yeah. yields were already coming down. Okay, the RRP uh, wa was coming down pretty uh, pretty rapidly. And that's where he was a bit uncomfortable um, replying to the exact question about the... He said, we're still we're still some way... But he acknowledged that the those, those reserves were coming down uh, quite rapidly. Is that a little bit... Is that a part of the orchestration? <sighs> Could be, but... Hmm... Yeah, well, I guess we were. I don't know. I it's it's not kind of. I mean, it it would rather be a political one uh, where um, polit politicians can can call for a victory. Uh, he's saying like, look at the look at the bond market strong as hell. Look at the the equity market strong as hell, and the dollar is still there. You know, um, yeah. even though stuff like dollar yen has collapsed, but. Um, if you look at euro dollar, it's still in the range somewhere that that we had because um, um, we we did trade above one ten uh, earlier. But uh, well, and I I don't think it's it's a question of uh, vol or so, uh, but it yeah. may have been a question of liquidity. Yeah, well, we'll see one way or another what happens uh, next year. Uh, and the ratio has asked um, if the market has priced one hundred and fifty basis points, but the Fed is saying seventy five. What level would you say the dollar finds support and turns around? Well, you got to remember the market always goes more. I mean, it's been it's been at hundred plus basis points uh, even before the, the the FOMC yesterday. So you always got to know. We, we we said it, you know, for the last few weeks and months. The market always goes gets overexcited. Um, then you've also got to look at who, who and what is really pricing that. Okay, you might get rates markets pricing it. Um, but is the wider market pricing it? Well, yields are pricing it. Um, let's have a quick look at, uh, you know, something like the one-year yield. You know, it's it's still above where rates are expected to go for the Fed. You know, median 4.6%. Uh, we're at 4.92% in one-year yield. So we're not seeing a full pricing, you know, like the headlines are, are chucking out a ratio. Um, so they, these... Are still your sort of indicators like short-term yields that's still your indicators what you know the wider market uh, uh you know uh, 
a clearer layman's pricing, if you like, and what the market is pricing for rate cuts. Um, you know, yeah, 10 years down below 4%, uh, the market is seeing cuts and cuts and cuts and cuts. Um, if we get down to 3% or more, then maybe it's starting to go too far. Um, but in terms of what the, what the dollar's going to do, um, as Kay says, you know, look at what's happening elsewhere. You know, yeah, big move in dollar yen. You know, that's got uh, double forces uh, flown against it. What's happening in yields, what's happening with now with the Fed and what's potentially happening with the BOJ. So this is still very volatile. Um, but something like euro dollar, yeah, big moves. But as Kay says, we're still in ranges and we've still got the ECB to come. So we've had a decent move, you know, and since the fair ECB, we're just banging around, you know, in a 250, 300 pit range. Um, so there's no fireworks going on here. So really, we're still just watching the data. Okay, so whether the Fed's right, or whether the market's right with its pricing, the data will tell us, you know, if the economy starts turning, um, job starts falling, you know, inflation gets back to target, goes through target, then, yeah, the market is going to keep pricing and pricing and pricing. So just know which way the wind is blowing. If you want to fade this this dollar this dollar weakness, pick your levels. If you want to catch a knife in dollar yen, you need to wait. You need to wait until you get – we've had a low. Now you need to see. Get a test of that low. Get a, few, you know, a bit of sideways action where we're not going down anymore. That's when you might get a bit of conviction to try and catch a knife. Um, but I would expect rallies to be sold uh, pretty swiftly. Um, in, in the dollar at the moment. Uh, but it can all change. You know, we get a Uber Dovish ECB later and uh, Euro dollar might be down at 107. Um, you just don't know. So as we said also before, just take everything as after the event. See where we are after this week, where prices have settled. See where we are after the new, after the end of the year, when the market has finished doing whatever it needs to do. And then coming into the new year, you have a better grasp of... Uh, whether the dollar's going to remain weak or not. Um, but in the meanwhile, just, uh, you know, just snipe your levels, just pick your levels, but be very careful um, in something like dollar yen. Um, right, so we've got an hour, and then uh, the Bank of England is up. Um, Shall we just continue you... to, to, to chat the hour away? We'll just keep going till uh, four o'clock, and then we'll go home. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the next one, Bank of England. So obviously the market is now uh, tarring the BOE with the same brush as uh, as the Fed. Um, that's what I was going to mention as well on the Fed. Um, obviously, all the banks have changed their forecasts, you know, still not worth the paper they're written on. Now, you remember uh, Goldman Sachs, OK, on Monday, Monday, they pulled, full, pulled forward their um, rate uh, – cut expectations um, from Q4 to Q3. Now they see a March cut for the Fed and they see 25 pip cuts in March, May and June uh, and then followed by a cut per quarter after that. So pff, Monday, they could keep their forecasts longer than Monday. JP Morgan now sees a first cut in June. This is all for the Fed versus their earlier forecast of July. Um, they see uh, rate being lowered by 125 basis points by the end of 2024. Barclays for the Fed, a June cut and two cuts in every other meeting next year, uh, which compared to their prior forecast of one cut in December 2024. Um, so that, that just shows you, A, the banks haven't got a fucking clue what they're talking about because they can't keep a forecast longer than three days. Um, so when you're talking about, again, pricing central banks, look at what, you know, this clickbait stuff is like versus what the actual assets are doing that show you what to, what cuts are forecast. Anyway, back to the Bank of England. I'm still unchanged. Um, you know, we're now seeing uh, 100 basis, over 100 basis points of cuts priced for the BOE, uh, where most people saw one or two cuts coming next year. We even had the CBI. Um, out, uh, I think, yesterday, saying they don't see cuts until 2026 for the Bank of England. But uh, now the market's getting all cutty about the BOE. I don't think they're going to be as dovish um, as the Fed. I don't think they're going to be fairly dovish at all. 
They're going to be um, talking about the weakness in the economy, reflecting on those September GD, uh, October GDP numbers. Um, but we still have sticky wages, sticky inflation. I see no reason for them to turn uh, pow on this. So I'm in mean, a little bit of a short in euro sterling, same as you, Ali, because um, that's been my plan for the BOE. Uh, if they aren't dovish at all, then uh, we should see uh, the pound gaining, uh, euro sterling dropping in that uh, effect. And then we'll see what the ECB does. Uh, Kay, what's your thoughts for uh, the BOE? Yeah, I tend to agree with you. Um, the risk, the, the the dovish risk is the is the votes probably, um, and yeah. <laughs> and just the fact the mere fact that Bailey is uh, in charge of the Bank of England. Yeah, at least but, he's not uh, speaking this time. <laughs> sorry, at least he's not speaking this time. There's no yeah, press conference. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's oh, that's true. This actually uh, could could be a, a, a tailwind for the for the sterling today. Although, as we said yesterday. Um, the last three interventions he did, he were he did not put the sterling lower, so there there may be a hint in uh, in there as well. Um, yeah, I, I I agree. They 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 probably will steer. Uh, yeah, just keep uh, keep the course going. Right now, the 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 inflation is coming down. the The issue is that Bailey got a little bit of. Um, let's say uh, right. He, he was proven right when saying the situation was. Uh, was was not good. He, he he of course exaggerated, but we saw the the, the data come out um, yesterday morning, right? Uh, they 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 weren't good at all um, on on the October GDP. Um, but um, yeah, I think the, the sterling could be the one that could be could be the one that that surprises a bit to the top side uh, um, later on today. Um, I, I'm not going to, to to disagree on that. I'm I'm very neutral until yesterday. I thought, okay, um, Sterling may be the one that suffers on the back of those numbers. Um, but then, yeah, I, I really I'm I'm gone very neutral on the Sterling right now. But I I don't disagree with your finding on on uh, on the Sterling, especially that I still don't uh, don't like uh, the euro too much and. Um, so euro sterling could be the play of the afternoon. You know where your stop is, really. Yeah. Um, but ideally, ideally, you 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 won't be done before the ECB, right? Um, you you have to you have to get the both together um, to um, to to look at that uh, at that level uh, like 86, 50, 60 there, right? Um, yeah. Above there, it's probably not good news, but. Hopefully, uh, let's say hopefully, it doesn't break there before the ECB. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, I'm, yeah, it's I'm, I'm still long my my longer term longs or my longer held longs. Um, and this is a separate short. If I, you know, if I had 50, 60 pips out of it um, before the ECB, then I'll take some profit and see what the rest does. I'm, mm. Two th firstly, before we move on to ECB, you're right in the vote count. We're expecting a seven to two. Um, so two people voting for a hike this time, which is down from six to three last time. Um, I think the risk is that it stays six three. There was enough hawks moaning about the level of wages um, at uh, well since the last meeting. Um, hmm. What's her name? I can't remember her name. I've forgotten it already. Who's really? the hawk? There? No. no, the other one. Man, man, man. Yeah, she's been the one who's been a big uh, moaner about the, the high level of wages. So yeah, uh, it it would be seen less hawkish if it goes seven to two, uh, but as the market is expecting that, maybe the price risk is is bigger for remaining six three. So that's the first thing we always need to to look at. Obviously, they're not going to do anything at rates, not going to do anything on QE, QT, all the rest of it. Uh, it's not uh, an issue the size of it in the UK. So the vote is what's going to count, and obviously any lines in the statement for that one. Um, so for the ECB, uh, this one's after power yesterday. It, it sows some seeds of doubt. I would have expected Lagarde um, to remain on the uh, higher for longer path because they are more focused on inflation um, and what it does, probably more so than the Fed. Um, you know, hate inflation in the eurozone. Um, but when you see that print, two point four percent. Um, you know, at very close to target, the closest uh, among the, the big major central banks to target. So got to take that into consideration as to whether there'll be 
remain hawkish or undovish, let's call it that. So there's, there's two coins. There's the headline CPI at 2.4. There's the core still remaining sticky. It, it really depends on where, what side of the fence she's going to land on. Um, I would still say on the non-dovish side, um, but we will see. And if she is, if she still remains hawkish, then uh, the euro is probably going to uh, kick on for another leg up. Um, but it depends on, obviously, what she then says in the presser after. So regarding the, my Euro Sterling play, um, yeah, if, if I get a bit of margin in it over the BOE, I'll probably take a good chunk off, maybe just leave a bit of, on for interest um, in case she is a bit dovish. Um, and either way, I'll reassess. If we get down to something like 85 again, I'll reassess both the long and the short. I might knock out the long and uh, keep the short, or I might reverse the short and add back into long. So I'll play it by ear on this one, uh, but I can, I can swing both ways. Kate, what are you? Uh, what are you well, thinking? I think, for, uh, the owl. Okay. Um, it's a well. I'm, I'm. I would love to say that Lagarde is going to pivot as well, and um, perhaps uh, um, a, a lady like uh, Schnabel gave her the uh, the uh, the excuse to do so. It's clearly Holtzman remains very hawkish, and then you have uh, what's the other one? Um, Casimir, Kazakhs. No, the, ones? the German one. The, um, oh, uh, Nagel. Yeah, Nagel um, is slowly, slowly shifting. Not has already shifted, the Dutch guy. Um, yeah, and that leaves the, the, a couple of the uh, uh, mid, mid Europe, um, middle of Europe uh, people like uh, a bit both, both sides of the, of the fence. Um, I'd love to say that she pivots as well today because um, we were looking at those uh, PPI numbers, the difference between the US and the, and the EU. And you look at the CPI, which overshot in the EU. So it went up higher than the, at, at, at one point, higher than the US, and then collapsed really a lot faster than in the US. So um, if you look purely at inflation, even though it's sticky, but then Powell had an excuse as well on the core CPI. To, to be a bit uh, which which was a bit more sticky but he uh, he pivoted and he said like all three measures of inflation are coming down which is positive so um they they, they look at the core when when it suits them and then at others when uh, when it suits them to the other side I'd say Lagarde has the same um possibility to do it but it may only come through the presser that that is where I think that we, we we will have to be a bit careful on the ECB today because we could have a relatively neutral statement and then Lagarde going in her typical um, lawyer style because she's, she's a lawyer by formation trying to lose her audience after five minutes, which she usually succeeds in doing pretty well, um, and then then slide into the uh, into the dovish side uh, of, uh, of things. That is kind of something that is within the possibilities, I would say. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, I think if it if it hadn't been for Powell pivoting yesterday, I think we'd 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 all be thinking uh, she's not for pivoting. But uh, like you say, it's it's funny how one thing can affect your thinking for others uh, in these situations. Um, uh well, well, I thought that ECB would pivot actually before before the Fed, and uh, <laughs> because of those inflation numbers coming down, because of the dynamic growth, because of the the, the PPI as well, uh, um, um, staying uh, staying well below uh, exactly there we go, staying well below. Uh, if you look at those um, uh, that 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 PPI really uh, really coming down uh, very very fast in the eurozone as well. Um, it's 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 always like um, yeah I really I well, I'm not going to say she does but it is it is I put it myself above fifty percent chance now that she pivots today yeah That's above fifty percent oh okay All right we'll have to come back and see how he did uh, on that one um, right so what are we going to do in prices then um, it really is a bit of a uh, mess at the moment. I mean, dollar yen is just, uh, you know, it can't hold a bid for longer than five minutes at the moment. Um, so where this one is going is anyone's guess. Uh, someone asked, I think, uh, who was it who asked, uh, can it bounce? Who's asking? 
Uh, Ali, can we reverse in uh, dollar yen towards back higher if the Bank of Japan does not do anything? Um, yes, we can. Obviously, next week we can bounce back, most certainly. Um, where we are when we do that is another question altogether. Oh, what am I doing? Let's, uh, let's go into there. Where we are when we do that is another question altogether. Um, but, you know, we, we, we're we back through this 38.2 fib. Got a bit of traffic down here, 140 and a half, 140, 60, up to, uh, you know, 141. So, again, another one of these former resistance areas that then broke and then we've had a bit of messing around. Um, and we've got some bigger numbers when we get down into uh, 138s, 139s. Uh, so, you know, as I said, if you want to catch a knife, and look for a turn. You've got you've got to get some price action to back you up. You've got to get something like this, where you get a move up and then support, 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 um, or you get a move down and you get support, support, and the support steps up again. That's what you want to look for. So you might have to wait a bit of time just to get a bit of confidence that we've stopped going down. Once you get that, then maybe you think about a counter trade. Um, and if it's before the Bank of Japan, where they're likely, obviously, well, likely to. Uh, Maybe, maybe likely, whatever. I think UAD is going to push back a bit on, on some of his comments that uh, apparently got misinterpreted. We know they're not going to change policy. Uh, that will be a big shock if they do anything there. So, yeah, there is a chance dollar yen bounces, but how far is it going to bounce with the market in rally sell mode in the dollar? Um, so I'm I'm short. I missed uh, getting in at my better levels. I ended up chasing it yesterday after the Fed. Um, but if I get a decent rally on the Bank of Japan, I've already been slicing. I'm going to add back into shorts. Um, so I'll, I'll be looking for a decent bounce to get back in. And uh, I don't care about the carry anymore. I've, I've missed enough uh, pips trying to get in this poxy trade for uh, the turns of the BOJ in the Fed. So I'm getting in it now and uh, I'm sitting in it. So, yeah, we could get a bounce. Um, but as I say, where we are before that bounces is what you've got to be careful about. Um, so maybe better trade is to look the other way for that one. Um, as for the rest, yeah, we're pretty much, as said, you know, we're holding the ranges. We're up in Euro dollar, mooching around the 109, 109, 15, 20 again. Um, you know, we've been here before, often, plenty of times. We're not going through yet. The market's pausing. Um, obviously, we've got the ECB risk, so it doesn't mean we've got a top yet. Um, you know, that will be defined by what the ECB does. If she's hawkish, we're probably carrying on up to 110. Um, if she's doing a pivot as well, as I say, we could be down to 107 pretty quickly thereafter. So be careful. It's difficult to pick a trade going in. Um, you've really got to react, uh, if you can, to what happens or sit back and uh, let the dust settle and then look for opportunities. Um, that's all I'm really doing for, for today. You know, we've got a lot of uh, other moves. Aussie dollar, that's up. That's gone through some decent levels. Holding the break for now, um, you know all that uh, better data has given it a little bit of boost, as well as what happened in the, the US dollar. Um, really, it's uh, it's an open game here. Kay, what are you got anything uh, in particular you're you're picking out, or you just uh, got your sniper rifle? Yeah, right um, yeah, I like the Aussie. Uh, I like the Aussie. Um, you could buy it here, though, could you? Sorry. You couldn't buy it here, though, could you? No, that's the problem. Um, I'd love to to buy it back on on the broken trend line, but I'm I'm afraid we won't get it. Um, it's a powerful, a powerful or powerful people that that uh, power power put in place there. So um, I I don't know how many um, retracements we are going to see. Perhaps. Um, I don't know. Perhaps there's there's one coming this afternoon or so. Um, but um, yeah, this is something, and especially if the assumption that risk markets are going to do uh, are going to do be okay into the end of the year, which is now likely the case. <clears throat> this this one this Aussie may not see too much uh, too too many retracements. <laughs> um, yeah, that one is uh, on my radar. And then uh, in the Swiss franc, I'm rather playing it through Cat Swiss right now uh, because the Euro Swiss, there's, there's the ECB risk. If Lagarde remains uh, neutral or a bit towards the hockey side, Euro Swiss could really start to break. Uh, there, there are some levels there 
in the uh, 95, 15, 20, 10, 20 zone, let's say. Um, there are some really uh, um, decent levels and we stopped right on it um, this, this morning. So that's one that I'm watching for the ECB. Um, yeah, the yen is is. I I I have to agree with you now. I think that every every rally would it be in dollar yen or stuff like euro yen or um, perhaps now Swiss yen as well is are are going to be sold. Um, but we'll talk about the Bank of Japan later. In the meantime, it's really... And you know what? In the end as well, I do think that perhaps those, those short gamma plays, they, they're still not, not really out of the market. So when it goes down, people just have to sell. And uh, when it goes up, then they may... You may see a bit uh, a bit uh, bigger uh, bigger rebounds as well, caused by, uh, caused by those uh, negative gamma plays. But um, yeah, I think... Um, there's going to be enough uh, rally sellers now. And what was really a bit strange today is that uh, the Nikkei is uh, is actually lower, um, where where uh, the rest of the uh, unless I'm looking at the wrong no, the Nikkei is actually lower today, and uh, perhaps that's uh, has to do with uh, with the political situation. But it's a bit of a strange one, I must say, where all the rest of the uh, equity markets are. Uh, Quite a bit higher. It has to be said that the Chinese markets are lower as well. Um, but that the Nikkei is lower, I don't really see uh, too much of a reason why. Um, I haven't looked at it in detail, though. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Is there anything uh, specific you want to look at? Uh, or should we call it uh, the show? So no, I think we, we've showed a lot. Um, yeah, just uh, I'm, I'm just gonna, going to to say exactly what I said, Cat Swiss. Um, Euros, yeah, I like to the short side because and but but I'm waiting with a very small position. I'm I'm waiting for the for the S for the ECB to give me the green light to sell more because I think uh, um, commodity currencies could do well, continue to do well into the end of the year, um, and really uh, made uh, yeah, yeah Aussie Kiwi probably um, remaining bait. So those are like the, the the themes right now, and and I guess we'll find. Uh, Dollar rally yeah. sellers in uh, in in most of the pairs now, right? Yeah, guys, I know you're asking about various pairs and assets and whatnot, but uh, time's ticking on. Um, we can have a, a fuller look at things when things are a bit calmer tomorrow, uh, whenever. Uh, Brian, you're in a bloody chat room, mate. You know what? Uh, <laughs> you can find your, your table yeah, analysis. Hor yeah, Horatio, I like that thought as well uh, uh, about Aussie Swiss, by the way. And uh, Ali, quickly on your gold. Um, we are in, in I'm, we are in a little bit of a zone here, mate. Um, I'm I'm not going to sell into this, but um, I know that you you've already tried it uh, a couple of times and it worked out relatively well. Um, yeah, I, I mean my my resistances are more in the twenty fifties from here, but um, yeah, um, that's uh, each and everyone has probably uh, different uh, sensibilities on that, but um, I I'm not going to stand in front of the train right now. That that's just my view. No, that's it wise words mate wise words right have a great day everybody trade safe over the ecb and boe and uh exico and all the rest of the crap we got coming today it's nearly christmas we're gonna take our take our eyes off the screens for a bit we shall see you all tomorrow and see uh, what those clowns at the central banks have done next thank you very much folks hey traders this is blake morrow with forex analytics thanks for stopping by our youtube channel don't forget to like these videos share them and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.